<laughs> oh, I've got questions about that random sailor dude. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. He we'll was, get into that. Yeah. There'll be more next episode. Your mother must have been a looker. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> well, because he's 100% chocolate. So, I, some, yeah. Some She's into aisle. something. She's some got a type. Aisle situation. She's got a type. <laughs> She's got type. She likes dark meat, man. Yeah, man. I no, get it. It's not what hey, think. Once she goes black, no. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. dude. She gets it. I don't know. <laughs> <I'm just> saying. <laughs> Sometimes you can. You can go comes, back and forth. Yeah. Her husband came off that ship really quick. Yeah, he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what, are, you, uh, what, what are you looking at down there? What you look like? You're gonna like feel him up next? What's you're like looking at his face? You're gonna grab his. What kind of stock are you rolling with? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> we'll get into I'm gonna, it. We'll I'm going to save it because there's something else that I just thought of. Like, okay. What might be. All right. Here we go. Welcome, House of the Dragons fans. Thanks for joining us on the Salty Nerd Podcast, the place you go to for the most in depth, nerdiest of conversations about hot D. <laughs> I'm joined as always by my fantastic panel of nerds. Dutch Butters is here. Hi. What's, what's up? up, dude? Get a little fatter. <laughs> I mean, I'm filling out the camera a little bit more. I'm gonna brag about it, I guess. <laughs> that's my that's my new goal in life. Are you like what's the what's the the gonna, giant dragon's name? Vagar. Vagar. Yeah. You are you Vagaring out? You're just gonna be the size of a he's, freaking Vagar's, 747. He's, he's pretty cool. Actually, Dutch butters now with more butter. Vagar <laughs> is a boy. Vagar is a girl. A girl. Oh my bad. She's my bad. She's just a big fat bitch. <laughs> You fucking fat cat. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bleep that Say out. Say that to her face. <laughs> I, 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 I dare you. She might bite my balls off or something. <laughs> well, she's barbecue. Speaking of biting balls off, <laughs> Judas here. Oh! <laughs> Matthew Kadish, producing the show as always. I was so impressed by this episode. Mm. I can't yeah. wait to talk about it. Yeah, me too. And last but not least, Charles. What's up, dude? How goes it, sir? Good, good, good. All right. Without further ado, we're not going to waste any everybody's time. We're going to be talking about this episode. Spoilers, heavy spoilers, because we're going to be diving deep. And uh, I've got some questions for the uh, knowledgeable people in the house. Of course. So um, present. Prepare. All right. This episode opens up. I, anytime uh, Damon is in. Uh, God, I can't remember the Heron castle. Heron Heron Hall. Any, thank you. Anytime Damon is in Heron Hall, I'm like glued to the screen because this is just it, everything is shot like a horror movie, and I'm like, give me more, please. So thank we, you. So, so here's the great thing He's, about what they're doing is that one of the things in the like even just in the uh, books, the Game of Thrones, like A Song of Ice and Fire, mm -hmm. there was always hints that Heron Hall is haunted. But it right. always seemed like it was kind of like, oh, it's kind of like just people saying it because it's like a myth. Yeah, myth. Just because anyone who was like the Lord of Heron Hall usually will die. Mm -hmm. now, their line will die. So it seems like they're really pushing that in. But I really do feel that the person who is really causing his del Ooh. delusions is Alice Rivers, who we've seen this episode. Right, yeah. We, well, she actually like, has a good like exposition dump about it all, too. Yes. Well, also, we learned a lot about Heron Hall that was not in the books, which is basically uh, a weirwood forest was basically destroyed to build on top of that. Mm. And Damon, yes. Damon's bed is built out of weirwood, which basically... Can cause you know like like prophetic dreams if you sleep on. Well, the, the thing is, about weirwood is that weirwood is a connection to the old gods. Yes. Right. What were you gonna say? Is, is weirwood like the tree that's up there? Mm -hmm. in the yeah, the red. Yeah. In the north. In the yeah. north, with, yes. where they all go out there and stand around it. And, yeah. And pray and give we're, thanks to the sometimes Lord. Sometimes cries. We're, we're saying that kills the night. King. The, the one eyed raven. Right there, right? Yeah. 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 The one eyed yeah, raven. It, whole, it's that, it's whole part. It's the heart of the gods' woods, and mm -hmm. um, they usually carve a face in it. Right. And, and that's the thing that uh, Bran would be able to like see through when he was like connected to like, oh, like carve the faces. Well, look, yeah. I know if I was lord of a castle and you had a haunted tree in your backyard, I, I would definitely make a bed out of it. <laughs> and the thing about it is that so for House Whore, Black Heron, but yeah, Heron Whore, he's the one who created Heron Hall. So this was before Aegon's conquest that he created, and clearly he built it on top of a weird right. forest. And we saw what happened to him. His whole line got barbecued by Balerion. Huh. Mm -hmm. by the so, so as a, I think this house is As a non-book reader, <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't pick up on any of that. Really? They talked about it, though. I guess I just wasn't paying but, attention. Yeah, because I, like, I, I, just, I believe Alice Rivers specifically said that. Yeah. Like, that was part of, like, when, it, like when, when, she, when she mentioned that, Charles, I turned to Jude. I was like, oh, wow, I had no idea. But that, that makes so much yeah. sense. That yeah. was actually something that wasn't even really discussed in the books. I guess I have to yeah, they added watch that for it. The show. Yeah, go back and watch it. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the dream that he was having. He walks into um, King's Landing mm -hmm. and the Iron Throne is there and we get, um, I am blanking on everybody's name this episode. Millie I apologize. Young, Millie Young 
Young Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra. Yeah. And uh, she's speaking in High Valerian. Yes. And at first, he doesn't understand what she's saying. He's walking closer. He's like, I can't hear you. Say something. Say it louder. And she's basically just, you're a piece of shit. Uh -huh. And uh, you're jealous of my, my, my role in this and that your brother loved me more than he loved you. And it was like, just straight to the heart. Dude. He decapitates off, off with her head. He decapitates her right Did then you and there. Notice, like the crown doesn't even fit her head. She's oh yeah, it's too big. Yes. It's like super big on her. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, she, uh, also, before that, he had a vision of himself as Amon. Like, yes, I think that's. Yeah. Is that later on in the episode? I thought that happened after this. But yes, he that did happen as well. Like he's chasing right. down Amon, who's obviously like very slender, very tall, with a straight hair, a little face, eye patch. But it's his face. But he turns, and it's, it was like a freaking Luke Skywalker Darth like, Vader moment from Dagobah. And, and, they're, um, put, they're putting mushrooms in his food. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. Just, she's like, here, drink this. And he's like, all right. All right, yeah. Like, Whoa, bro. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Don't drink you just anything took it? a witch gives yeah. you. Yeah. I was confused about that because the, he's Look. super skeptical of this chick the whole time. And he's and like, food. get away from me, witch. Alice Rivers can make you do shit. She can kill you with her mind. Yes. Look, man, go, go over to Jude and Matt's house. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you're, you're feeling a little weird. Jude goes, here, drink some of this. And you go, and you all go, right. Okay. That's for you. Is there shrimp in this? <laughs> this? This smells like shit, dude. Drink it. <laughs> drink it. Yeah. Drink it. And, and then like 45 minutes later, he's like, can I have another one? Yeah. I feel I really like good. I feel yeah. really weird. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and, and, and just the fact that he's also losing track of time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This whole, I feel like this whole scenario, everybody outside of Heron Hall is like, where the freaking hell is Damon? Mm -hmm. Dude's been missing for weeks and weeks and we haven't heard anything from him. He's over here. He's like, it's been two days. Hey, uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, what is... Well, he's in the, the castle tripping balls. <laughs> where, where, where's his dragon? Uh, in the field. Is it just like hanging out on the top, yeah. the top of the... Yeah. Eating some sheep. Just, eating sheep, yeah. Right. yeah. Did, did they mention that too? That they, they were like having a hard time sustaining the appetite of the dragon? Or was that a different conversation? Well, that was everybody a different dragon. says that different all dragon. throughout history. Yeah. Like, we got to feed all these dragons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They actually came up in, I think it was a small council meeting. They were talking about just, feet, given the blockades that's still yes. happening, yeah. the sheep, it's like, particularly Vagar, keeping them fed is becoming a problem. Now it's yeah. screwing up the sheep, you know, yeah. supply for everyone. And yeah. in fact, there's three wild dragons and they call one of them sheep stealer. Like the <laughs> people just kind of name them themselves. <laughs> yeah. And they call one sheep stealer because it's constantly stealing sheep. That's funny. And that's going to, that's probably, we're probably going to hear about that name Ooh. next episode hmm. because we haven't like, they teased out where we're going to go with that, where that's going to happen without saying much, but we're probably going to start seeing and hearing those names next episode. Okay. I heard, hmm. now this, talk to us. This is, book stuff that hasn't come in yet, but I don't think it spoils anything. So just disregard. But I just, have you heard that the show is combining nettles and misery? What? I hope I've, not. I've heard this. I hope not. I've heard this. That'd and be I, stupid. I, I don't know. Is that a dragon? <laughs> no, 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 no. What is that? Hot nettles? I, I, I don't want to get into it because it's a character that's supposed to come in later. Oh. So, so I don't want to spoil anything for you, but, but it's. Yeah. So I didn't hear that. I hope that's false. Yeah, okay. I, I have heard that. Ugh. All right, let's talk about, so Damon sits down with the young lord of uh, the Tullys, right? He's a, he's a Tully. Yes. Oh, a little 10-year-old yeah. blackfish. Yeah. Well, he's, well, black he's, well, he's, he he's not he's, the lord, he's the heir. Yeah, he's the heir. But the guy is basically in a coma, it sounds mm -hmm. like. He's like, yeah. he's, in a, he's in a waking sleep yeah. and he can't do anything. I'm not have you, dead. <laughs> have you ever heard of just like taking a pillow and just... Yeah, no, he legitimately says that. He's yeah. like, why don't you just speed up the process, yeah. kid? So, like, yeah. I can't talk to you. I got a war to fight, man. Yeah. So basically, Damon, at that point, since the kid's useless and he's like, oh, I'm waiting for me, you know, I can't do anything without him. He's like, that's not our way. Basically... Um, what Damon is saying now is like, I'll just meet in with the River Lords individually yeah. because this is a waste of my time. Yeah, which is true. I like I, the whole yeah. idea of like, yeah, we're going to send this kid, but he can't actually do anything. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, also, Damon's not there on Rhaenyra's part. Like, he's there because he wants to raise his own host mm -hmm. and uh, basically, you, you know, kind of take, take the throne for himself, essentially. And, I don't uh, know about that. Well, well, well. I mean, Alice Rivers basically spelled that out in this yeah. episode, it, I, and that—that's his initial motivation, I think. But eventually, I think he, these dreams are going to lead him to kind of like you know come back to Rhaenyra's side or whatever the case. But right now, the reason that he's you know kind of being so aggressive with the River Lords is because he needs his he needs an army if he's going to march on King's Landing. And you think that's really his motivation? You think it's a, it's a facade? Him being there for Rhaenyra is actually like a facade for him? Well, he, he's never said that he's there for Rhaenyra. Like, he left uh, Dragonstone uh, and went to Harrenhal because, like, he's making a play for the throne. He's feeling sorry for himself. Well, I, yeah. well, I, remember, I gotta get out of here. Remember, he before, when he left, 
the whole thing was to raise a host because she doesn't really have an active army right yeah. now. Right. But, but the thing is, is like when he left, he didn't leave to do that though. Like he basically was like peacing out because he had that fight with Rhaenyra. Mm. And she said that like, you know, you've never supported me. You've, you've never, like, like am, am I your lead? I've and never like, trusted you. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, 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 exactly. And, and so basically the answer to that was like, you're right. I've never, you know, felt fealty to you and I want to go off and, and claim my birthright. Mm. If that's what the show's doing, I, I that's stupid. very much dislike that. Hmm. No, well, no. well I, I think he's going to come back around, but I think at this point, like, they need to have that shift for him. Mm, I think that's an unnecessary... Unnecessary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next thing that happens, this is the big topic for me, because I was very confused. And we have a lot of speculations. <laughs> um, so, Renice uh, goes to um, her husband's ship. I guess they're still fixing it after all this time? <laughs> yeah. like, it was really messed up. Like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well, he nearly really died. So. Uh, okay. Fair enough, I guess. Lousy really, with crap. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> really restful. Like, are you rebuilding it from scratch? Like, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. uh, but she meets up with the guy who uh, basically saved her husband from his water, Alan Valerian. water and grave. Alan v Valerian? Well, not yet. We're, Alan... we're, we're four episodes into season Wait, two, right? Alan of Hull. Alan Thank of you. Hull. Of Hull. Don't spoil it. I don't know anything about this. Well, they kind of told you in this episode. Uh, yeah. There was a lot of things happening in this scene. They made it very clear. They made okay. it very clear. Because she's like all like touchy-feely with his face and he's like, oh, your mother must be beautiful. And I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. Right well, is she we'll hitting on him? Well, think of it Corliss's like this. Son. She sees Corliss's son. That's his bastard. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. his bastard son. Basically, bastard son. She, she's like, oh, yeah. about 25 years ago, my and, husband and, fucked your mom. Yeah. And think of it like this. He's got a brother. Right. So it's probably not just one bastard. Okay. So he's been banging the same Wait a second. sea winch this whoa, whole time? Whoa. Yeah, Dutch. <laughs> I'm with you, man. I Adam, didn't get, the dude Adam, that Adam, rescued the guy. Yeah, yes. this guy. So Alan. That's his bastard, his bastard son. son. Yes. yes. And he knows this? Or yes. Does yes, yeah. he knows this. And, but does but, the son but know? But she's just figuring it yes. out. And here's the thing. You got to remember, Renice has lost both her children. Yes. This, allegedly. This show. So she, does, she just has her grandkids now. So yeah. she doesn't have. So basically, it's like her son, Lenor, and Raina. I think it's Lena. Lena? Lena. The one that went to Pentos? Yeah. They both, okay. They're both dead. So it's like, oh, my husband has kids. They're Damon's kids. first or second wife. Oh, that's Lena. right. She died in birth. Not his yeah. bronze. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The other one that gave him kids. Gotcha. Um, so she, like, what's the plan here, though? Like, is she like, you should accept him as your son because all your all your heirs are dead? Is that what's is that her suggestion? Well, because I don't see so, like what's the point. It's gonna come into play. Yeah. Well, well, this scene in particular in this episode, basically, um, Renice who is very noble. Like she, she has a lot of, uh, queen who never was mm -hmm. the, the queen who never was, but like, like she has a lot of like, like, you know, upright morals and stuff like that. She realized that this, this bastard son who, uh, Corliss has never acknowledged or anything like that, basically heroically acted and saved his life. Mm -hmm. And Corliss was still kind of like, you know, like not in the cold shoulder. Yeah. He's yeah, a bastard. Yeah, well, well, but, <laughs> but she wanted him to acknowledge that the fact that he acted heroically and, and that, because he's a bastard, she knows he doesn't have to hide it. But Corliss was still like, "Oh, like we we can't we can't." So do does yeah. And how often, he know that Corliss is his dad? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how often have we seen in history when a uh, like a lord has a bastard, and then the lord decides, "I'm going to go ahead and give you my name." This yeah, happened. Ramsey Bolton, not about right. not a good example, yeah. but yeah, yeah that's and what and happened. Like Ned yeah. Stark <clears throat> could have done that with Jon Snow, and right. that was one of the things that that was contentious because. <laughs> Everybody was like, why don't you just give him your name? You're raising him as your son. Why aren't you doing Basically, that? Basically, the, 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 the thing, thing right? about it is that bastardy is a huge, it's hugely taboo in the Seven Kingdoms, even though a lot of lords do yeah, it. Yeah, but they all got him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Multiple. But, but the thing is, because of some stuff that's happened in the past, probably even before Aegon's Landing, bastards have tried to take over, basically have tried to take <laughs> the birthright of the Trueborn. Right. Like, for instance, the Blackfyre Rebellion. Which, which hasn't happened yet. That hasn't happened yet, sorry. <laughs> but either way, it's like there have been instances in Westerosi history where bastards have tried to take the claims of the trueborn son. Mm. So that's why bastards are looked at with suspicion and scorn. But because all of their heirs are gone, it's like, why You need not? an heir. Like, why not, dude? Yeah. Like, he's a heroic guy. He saved your life. You might as well dote upon him. And the guy who name. was supposed to be Lord of the Tides got eaten by Vagar. So, uh, uh -huh. yeah. Well, don't they have another son that's like, no. Exile? No. Well, yeah, well, he faked his death, but he's, in, he's on the, the other bastard. side of the world. Like sea smokes, dude. Uh -huh. right? yeah. Yeah. They he, think, he's Corliss's... They yes. think he's dead. But they think he's dead. That's one of the reasons why... I think it was in the episode, book, he is dead. In the book, he is dead. But that's one of the reasons why they showed... I think Alan was doing something, maybe fixing the boat again. 
and, <laughs> and they saw the dragon, and they, right? show, and they showed sea smoke in the right. Backdrop. This is like yeah. Gendry still rowing. <laughs> <laughs> oh so God. what's your question, man? Talk to us. I, I I'm just trying to put it all together. Okay. In my head. Oh, yeah. The, the, the FBI. Seaboard <laughs> everywhere right now. I'm like, so God, the real stuff. heir to the sea snake empire, whatever you want to call it, is he's probably he's off on the other side of the planet, just yeah. getting boned by somebody who doesn't, boned he doesn't, by give, his a, new he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care. Yeah. He's out of the picture. And in the book, he never. In the book, he's dead. He's dead. So he had a, he so, had a, he had a court. The thing that actually the, rumored to happen in the show actually happened in the book, where he okay. got into a fight with his new favorite. All right, and mm. then he died. So why would they change that? A wild card, maybe, I don't if know. they want to and pull now, it and now, off. And now Bastard Boy's here. No, there's, so there's, clearly, because yeah. I think if you introduce a, a gay character and then kill that character off. It's frigging. Like, you really think that's what it is? Yes. yes. No. How lame. No, I know. Uh, no, it is. It is. That's it so is. lame. It was. Just let it. He's a character. Who they, gives a shit? They want to keep those check boxes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, yeah, he's still in the show. Pretty much. <laughs> that bothered me when I saw it. I'm like, just treat him like a character, dude. Yeah, yeah. For real. All right. Now we have another big reveal. Talk to us. Uh, in the next scene, we get the, we get the Grand Maester in King's Landing talking to the Queen or, or Queen oh, uh, oh, Regent. Oh, Alison. Alison. She's Dowager Do- Do- Queen. Queen. Dowager Queen. I can never remember these stupid titles. Um, and she <laughs> has requested uh, Moon Tea. Moon Tea, yes. which is mm. basically the abortion tea. So, I don't know if I can say that on YouTube or not. But morning after, after, morning after tea. <laughs> 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 morning after, after tea. It's crazy. The Miss Morshin tea? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she's kind of keeping it under wraps. She doesn't. She's not telling anybody. Friend. She's like, oh, it's for probably a handmaiden who got knocked up by the king or something. I would assume <laughs> that's the story she's trying to spin, but it's yeah. really for her. So Christmas, everyone's just like, yeah, right. Well, we yeah. don't need no little coal bastards. Remember? Yeah, no, we definitely don't so need that. Really well, cool. also the queen's. We have too many coals as it is. Right, the queen's husband's dead and she's just on her own oh, so if be... she pops up pregnant there, there's gonna be a lot of questions what would happen what would, if she was she like would they, would they murder her would she just like be executed or something or i don't know, know. if she oh, i don't think she'd be executed but she'd yeah. probably be sent to set to the sept the sept or the silent system put on those nun robes <laughs> <laughs> for real <though. laughs> you're done <laughs> here okay so my thoughts on this this is one of the reasons i didn't like this Allison Cole situation because it's taking up way too much time from interesting yeah, aspects of both of these. It is kind of soap opera. It's right? taking mm. too much time from more interesting things these characters could be doing. Do you think they're trying to give Allison something to do? There's because she, she could have been doing besides faking not being pregnant. Maybe dealing with her daughter who's going crazy yeah. and dealing with the kid that she now has to raise because her daughter is going crazy. Yeah. Mm. That would be way more interesting. She, her, mm. they, she wasn't even in this episode. Not at all. No. Which do you guys feel like she should have a bigger role? Yes. Uh, well, not, well, not eh, slightly ish. You know, at least I 45 like seconds like they gave everybody else. What we had of Helena should have been more of a terrorized Helena. Right. Mm-hmm. And now that we're there, I'm kind of like, whatever with her. This is why I didn't like what they did with Golden Chiefs, but that's another story. <laughs> We've already talked about it. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anybody, any other thoughts about this? Is it, is so it she's as. She's clearly trying to find any mention of ice and fire, fire and ice. Oh, that's a good point. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up. Oh, yeah. So she's, she's digging looking, through she, all of the books. She's yes. going out of her mind after yes. her conversation with Rhaenyra, mm-hmm. and she's trying to find is, is she, was she fucking with me? Mm-hmm. Is this an actual fairy yeah. tale story? But it's not written down no, anywhere. No, so she's not, not going to find, find it. The only, the only time. So she's going to tell herself, Rhaenyra's full of shit. She's trying to fuck with. Well, here's the uh, the only the only person who has it is, is Aegon, and he doesn't even know he it's has in the cat's paw. Yes. Yeah, you have to cat's put it under died. fire in order yeah. to see it. Yeah, and now Aemon has. But Allison doesn't know how to read High Valerian. No. no. Right? So she would Aemon have to bring. Aemon does. She would have to bring it to Aemon. Yeah. And the cat's paw is that dagger. Yes. On both shows. Yes. yes. That Aegon just it's like the, with them all the it's time. Like a little thread. Well, now Aemon has the whole thing it. together. Well, we'll get there. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Hold on, man. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you had it. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's, that is an interesting part. It comes up multiple times in this show or in this episode where she's like, I'm looking for your father's books. Where are they? And he's like, oh, well, uh, also, she asked the Grand Maester. It's like, do you think uh, my husband wanted his son to yeah. ascend the throne? And look on the Maester's yeah. face where he's, he's like, like I don't. Uh, I, mean, I, 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 I want no, nothing I, to do with this conversation. <laughs> I'll have to talk like, to the really Citadel, like which means I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I tell you yes, will you kill me? <laughs> I would you like the morning after? T- <laughs> <laughs> I'll send a raven to the Citadel. Maybe yeah. I'll hear back. That's interesting. So, but didn't um, and I'm going back to Game of Thrones, the original show. Uh, Sam, when he went to. Uh, to become a Grand Maester. Mm. Didn't he find stories about this stuff in those... Not about the Song of Ice and Fire. What he found out, and this was stupid that they did it this way, (laughs) but he found basically the fact that Rhaegar got his marriage annulled to... 
Oh, he found out about Jon Snow's lineage. Yes. So he didn't actually know anything about the the myth and the story. No, 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 no. He just found out that Rhaegar got his marriage to, uh, I forgot which. um, But I I will say that in the Song of Ice and Fire books, there is a maester in Old Town that Sam meets at the end of Dance with Dragons, I believe, uh, who's like a specialist in like the the dark magics, like, like, like the history of the dark magics. And so, like, he's someone who might know of, of that type of thing. Okay. He knows about the dragon, like, the, potentially the... the well, well he, he knows that right. magic's coming back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the three-eyed raven would obviously know. Yes. Yes. Who was a Targaryen as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Brendan Rivers, he's one of the great bastards. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the great the, bastard? A gr- there's great bastard. That's, that's, that's a really good title. <laughs> that's a long story. That's a great bastard. That's a, that's a long story. <laughs> great bastard. And it's also, and, and it also is one of the reasons why bastards are looked upon with suspicion. Mm. So. He's a highborn guy. All right. Yes. Next scene we get uh, is a small council scene on Dragonstone. Rhaenyra is still Everyone traveling. Everyone is pissed. Everybody's upset. Everybody's on edge. Because she didn't tell anyone. Renice is trying to hold things together as best she can. She's like, there's like, there's no rudder in this small council. We don't know what we're doing. Nobody has a decision. Well, well, Even uh, Jace is pissed, too. Before, yeah. before we get to this, we, we have to set the stage that Chris, Kristen Cole has been kind of going through the crown lands. Yeah. Uh, basically you know, destroying all of uh, Rhaenyra's support there. Duskendale, and, and, Rosby. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and the small council, like, uh, Rhaenyra's still missing at this point. Yes. And so, like, they're they're like, what do we do? Um, I believe, like, her son, I Jace. forget his name, Jace, uh, you know, he's there, but, like, nobody really, like, is listening to him. Uh, Renice is there, and nobody's really listening to her. And then Corliss comes in like a fucking boss. So throwing it down, yeah, dude. Yeah. What yeah, the yeah, fuck? And oh, everybody... Shit, and, the sea, sea snake is here? Yeah. Yes. Which, it, I've never like, seen him... Is, is this what has become of the council? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. And he throws his dick on the table, <laughs> yeah, and everybody's right. like, oh, shit, sorry. He throws yeah. his sea snake <laughs> on the table. Yeah. But, it's a hell of a hot dick out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so Corliss c- comes marching in. He kind of puts everyone in their place, and yeah. Rhaenyra finally shows finally up. Finally fucking shows up. And, and they lay out the fact that basically... Um, one of her, like the the keep of one of her small council members, is under siege by Christian Cole, and she makes the decision where she she's like, okay, you know, I tried to avoid this, obviously can't. I'm gonna fly out there on my dragon and destroy, you know, the Christian's army, and everyone's like, everyone's like, slow down. He said, send someone. <laughs> Not you. you. <laughs> well, I was really taken aback on this scene by how pissed off. Jace was. Jace was. was. He it was, every right it was but it was out of character to me. It feel, it not really. Like, I, I feel well, like he's kind of a mama's boy and all of a sudden no, but she, no, she all of a sudden he drew some stones. But she didn't know no one knew where she was. Yeah. And things are like all this stuff is happening and she's not there. She didn't tell anyone yeah. where she was. And same with Damon. And yeah. also when um when she told them where she was everyone was like are you out of your mind? Yeah. Well yeah. kind of rightfully, rightfully so. so. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree with you. That's yeah. 100% the reaction. It, it should have been. It's like because Every time the king or queen or whoever's in charge says, I'm going to go handle this myself. Everybody's like, well, no, you're not. No, no. Sit the fuck down. You're too important. And, to they, go and, they, and, they, and, they, and they pretty much tell her. That happens later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So basically, I mean, what they tell and like, I'm glad Matt laid that out. But what they tell her is that if you die, if anything happens, this all, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this all falls apart. Yes. Yeah, no, there's no point to any there's of this no fight, and then we're all going to lose our heads. Yeah, go ahead, go out there and get killed. Yeah, then if we can she, stop fighting, if she dies fighting this this war for the throne, then anybody who sides with her is automatically gone. Yeah, like they're going to just wipe yeah. us all out. So and there's there's a point to them being like, you can't freaking just go out there and yeah. do it. And, and here's another thing too, Austin. This was this is something that was a nice little touch. They should have done it more in season one, but whatever. Basically, when Kristen Cole's there, kind of going, he went to Rosby, he went to Duskendale, mm-hmm. he was like beheading, killing. Putting yeah, we're going to get there in a minute. So, yeah. yeah. The thing is, is that, um, well, we brought it up earlier, I think, but um, we finally hear somebody call him the Kingmaker. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, finally got that title. They start calling Oh, well, boy, did that dead. go to his head. Well, <laughs> well, well, that was supposed to be something, in, like you said, in season one, where when, um, when Aegon's coronated, it was uh, Kristen Cole who was supposed to put the crown on his head. And, and, he was and that was the point where people started calling him Kingmaker. And he was supposed to be the one who convinced Aegon, mm-hmm. this is why you need to become king. Hmm. Yeah. But he didn't do that. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. So basically, they're, they're like, look, we have to go. We have to go fight this war. And Renice is the one who actually finally says, listen, I'll do it. My dragon's been in war before. We've battled before. I've she got has the biggest one. I've got the biggest one. I'll handle the situation. You stay here. I, the biggest one of the blacks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we cut obviously we'll catch up with them later uh, then we go to Kristen Cole's little campaign uh, mm-hmm. he's going around just whacking heads anybody who doesn't 
doesn't side with Aegon is pretty cool. Gone. This is a good scene. And I like that and because it showed that he is a good battle commander. I was going to say that. Like, look, this episode, as much as everybody hates Kristen Cole, I'm watching this and I'm like, but he's not bad on the battle. He's, yeah, he's, he's a good, good leader. When doesn't it doesn't make him a nice guy. That doesn't make him a nice guy. I didn't say what well, Tywin Lannister uh, wasn't like a good guy, but he's a badass on the field. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, like, <laughs> you can all bend the knee to me or, or die. I'm going to chop your head off. Yeah. Like, I'm going to do this guy right here in front of you right now. Yeah. And so, as soon as he does that, <laughs> everybody's like, oh, okay. okay. And this, and this, is the, <laughs> this is the thing, parts of the character that should be shown more should be yeah. accentuated yes and that's what I liked about it is that I okay let's show this part of him yeah yeah. and this this guy uh, the I can't remember the lord of whatever manner he darkling. was at he's a darkling yeah he was what basically like you're a freaking piece of shit he spits on him tells him your death is gonna be worse than mine like he's like <laughs> he's down to his last breath talking trash about Chris and Cole I like this guy I don't know who he was but I wish I would have seen lord, more of him lord darkling yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, Kristen Cole also pulled an Admiral Holdo in this one where he basically didn't tell anyone his plans. Yeah. All, Which, all, all of his generals are like, what are you doing? Yeah. I think it's smart to do that, though, because there's so much just... There are still people who are loyal to Damon. Yeah, yes. and there's so, much, there's so much spy work going on. There's so much stuff that if he entrusted this and he's told everybody, this is the plan, guys, it 100% would have been cut and, off. And also the thing, the thing to remember is that even though he's a Kingsguard, he's the Lord Commander, he's still pretty lowborn. Mm -hmm. And that plays into the part when it comes to these little lordlings, these second lords. They have no respect for him. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, also with Kristen Cole. So at this point in Westerosi history, uh, Dorne is still an independent kingdom. Yes. They're not part of the Seven Kingdoms. And so uh, because he's Dornish, a lot of people look at him with a lot of suspicion because mm -hmm. uh, the people up north hate the Dornish. Good point. Particularly in the Crown Lands as well. So is he, is he a sand? Is no. he a bastard? No, 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 no. no. He's, he's, he's just, okay. Basically, just, so, with, and this is the thing that I'm curious how this is being done because from what I remember, he was the son of a steward for House Dondarrion, which is a Stormlander house. Okay. That's why I'm kind of just like, wait a minute. So okay. maybe his mother is Dornish. I don't know. Okay. But that's basically what I remember is that son of the steward for the Dornish, the Stormlander house in House Dondarrion. Remember Beric? Yep. So that's where his origins are from. Okay. But but also during Aegon's conquest, Dorne was the only uh, place that he couldn't uh, conquer. And they were also responsible for killing his sister and her dragon. The one he loved the most, Rhaenys. Yeah. Yeah. The other Rhaenys, actually, yeah. the first Rhaenys. So, so uh, because of that, a lot of people, like, you know, who bent the knee are, like, they look at any Dornishman as, like, scum of the so earth. So I'm just, okay. Talk to us. Dorne is south, far south. That's the, where uh, Doctor Bashir was from. Yeah, in, in, yeah. right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This where Dorian Martell. Okay, Pedro Pascal. Pedro yeah. Pascal, the, 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 the Viper, the, the chick who got to like watch her daughter. The Sands, Alaria, Alaria yes. Sands. Yes. Yeah. So, the, okay. That and also, sense? I don't want to like annoy people. And also, no, south, I so, and also <laughs> south of Dorne is where the Step Stones are. Right. And that was basically the arm of Dorne initially before it got. Yeah. That's what I, connected to Essos initially. Too much, man. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I, I just didn't. I don't look at him and see Dornish, which, which, which is because in the in the Game of Thrones, there's clearly a mm -hmm. archetype of person that comes from Dorn. They're mm -hmm. they're like, you know, like Arabic. from Iraq. They're he's half Ara not Arabic. Dorn too. So I'm I'm just I was just looking at Chris and I was like he's well, he, he, he looks like he's from. You know, one of the one of the white countries, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You, you know, it's just, I don't mean to be that way, but it's, he says it's, that while he's wearing that hat. What? what? What's wrong with that hat? What's wrong with this hat? What are you wearing? It's, don't it's, tread on me. Oh what? no, this is the this is Jay's hat. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. The what? Never mind. Never mind. Okay, doesn't matter. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the next scene that we're going to talk about Oof. is uh, the small council scene with Aegon and Aemon. And God, this is freaking, this was just brutal. Mm, brutal. It was so good to watch. So satisfying to watch. So they're, they're strategically planning this war. They're talking. And they found out that Heron Hall has been taken by Damon, which yes. whatever that means. But everybody, like uh, um, the clubfoot, Laris. Laris, thank Strong. you. Laris Strong and Eamon both know, it's like, who cares if he has Heron Hall? It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. They'll probably go crazy. It's a big, yeah. big piece of crap. It's, a, it's a giant, he says, like, that thing is crippled more than yeah. I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That place is ill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. The yeah. specifically said, he, he's like, I moved all the money out of there. So, like, you know, it's basically just like an empty victory yeah. for him. But for some reason, because I think it's just an immaturity, he's like, no, but I want Heron Hall because it's the biggest castle. Because it like, looks big. That's right. all that matters to him. He's like, but it's a big place. And yeah. Like, yeah, but listen, all these other Actually, ones. Actually, I think what he said was, but I want it. Yeah. <laughs> Legitimately, <laughs> and, and I so think the, he did. And so what comes out of this yeah. is that 
Aegon finds out, Aegon finds out that Aemond and Kristen Cole have been cutting him out entirely from right. the strategic planning because what they're going to go is to I forgot the name of the place that the battle the Rook's Rest yeah mm, yes so yeah. they are going to take Rook's Rest because they know if we take Rook's Rest it will cut off Dragonstone and that's one of Rhaenyra's allies yeah. will force her to come out with a dragon yes so he's, he's to, baiting them and, he's baiting and, yeah, them. Yeah. Aegon's whole argument is like no one cares about Rook's Rest it's it's insignificant Hall is symbolic like it's the it's the thing that lords over the Riverlands and whoever controls it controls the Riverlands and so he doesn't understand the overall strategy strategy that, that, yeah, strategy. Strategy that they're employing here yeah. and then and then we get the scene and it basically harkens back and this is a good harken back to season one where as we saw, when it came to the lessons, when it came to martial warfare, when it came to learning High Valyrian, yeah. Aemon was the best student ever. Yeah. And Aemon paid attention. Yeah. And yeah. Aegon and Aegon didn't. Fucking made. And, and, yeah. and, and then you could see Aegon, Aegon could barely keep oh, up. He, with he him. didn't know how to speak High Like his brother was like yeah. poetry. I want to have to make war. Yeah. <laughs> And his brother's like, mm. and that, that, that weird <laughs> ass little smirk that Eamon has and he, all the time. And he did that. Mm. Mm. It's cute. It's cute. Just go sit down. He let just me handle this for you. completely embarrassed him. Granted, yeah. none of them knew what they were talking about. And that's always a thing I Which, love when they do that because yeah. it's kind of like, it's that elevation above everyone else. Yeah. yeah. The, you know, all I, all I saw in that crown. scene, all I saw in that scene was my daughter's talking smack about me <laughs> in, 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 in their little language that they made up when they were 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. All, all kids do it, especially <laughs> girls. But they're all like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, they're all. <laughs> well, and, and everyone looked super uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was also funny mm -hmm. how um, he insulted the, the King's Guard. The, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That was right. Lick spittles. Lick spittles. That's yeah, a very that's, typical name. But that's real, though, because it's he, he hired his goofball friends. Yeah. And they're obviously yeah. not good yeah. at their job. Oh, they and basically, he's, he's all, saying, like, I see how you. Run the, r yeah. Why would I cut you in on the planning? You're gonna fuck it up. And then he also, does. and then he, he and then he says basically, okay, what do you have a better plan? That's the kicker right there. <laughs> He's like, do you have a better suggestion? Yeah. And, what and, is it, buddy? And of course he doesn't. Yeah. It was such a freaking demeaning scene and to Aegon. It was beautiful. And it was an interesting <laughs> callback to the last episode where Aegon, with his lick spittles, mm -hmm. went to try and humiliate. Aemond and Aemond just kind of goes oh, in the buff yeah. with his own hot D yeah. and owns his nakedness. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It was this was kind of like a Yeah, like, he's still pissed. Yeah. And it's like, I'll show you. Like you might make fun of me and my girl and my my whore friend or whatever, but I'm gonna emasculate you. That's my you. favorite whore. That's my favorite <laughs> one, man. That's his only one. I'm gonna emasculate you in front of this small council. Yeah, it was, yeah he, it was he, a, he got him where it counted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was a great scene. Really, really superbly written. Uh, yeah. This whole thing was great. And again, just another thing shining a light upon like these kids were never raised to love each other. No. They weren't loved by their parents. No. no. Neither of their parents gave a shit about them. They just popped them out and then just had a maid raise them. Yeah. They don't love each other. They're not and for Aemon, each other. And you could say with Aegon is that he was just you can't help but feel bad. And I think this is just a testament to Tom Glenn Carney's acting mm -hmm. that you just really felt bad for him. You do, yeah. Because, I, yeah like, I did. I, like, I felt really bad. And what's what's even weirder is he likes you, you you watch the show and some of the stuff afterward and you watch interviews with him and he's still all in his makeup and everything. The dude's like very well mm -hmm. spoken and oh, yeah. put together. And he, even watching those off the show kind of things make you feel a little more empathy for the king yeah. when he's explaining what's going on mm -hmm. inside the king's head. And kind of stuff was like, man, they they were dicks to this guy. Yeah, yeah. and then even like, <laughs> what, what what's really interesting about his portrayal is is like the the inclination is there to just make him another Joffrey, right? Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and they the don't. And and you know the directors of the show have come out and said like this guy made this character his own, mm -hmm. made yes. him unique, yes. made him interesting. And I, I even told Jude when we were watching this, I, I was like, man, like the guy who plays Aegon, like he just brings like another dimension to the character. Yeah. Yes. Because it'd be so easy to just play him as like a complete So idiot. easy to be. And yeah. there's, a, there's a scene in Game of Thrones when Joffrey, it's a very famous scene when he's talking down to Tywin and he's like, <laughs> I am the king. And he's yeah. like, nobody who says I am the king is the true king. Right. Yeah. And it was this, this whole scene of and just- And you have that playing in your head yeah. as you're watching Aegon. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, but I don't feel the same way. But I watched that scene and I'm like, get him, Tywin. Yeah, well, also because I mean, we we're never really meant to empathize with Joffrey in many ways. Where again, like, the actor is brought, like you said, brought yeah. so much nuance to the character, and then you're also seeing just 
how his own family has just treated him. And it's just mm-hmm. like, how long yeah, and we get a, we get a scene of that in a little bit Suddenly too. You realize like you're in charge, but you're not because yeah, you're but, a fool. But, yeah. but also it's easy to forget that Joffrey was the, the worst parts of all the Lannisters combined. Like yes. there was no Baratheon in him. There was no um, Literally. Targaryen in him. <laughs> I, like he was basically like a product of incest, and it was like the, he, he spoiled was the, rotten. He, he was the purest form of Lannister, mm. literally. Yeah, spoiled rotten, had no father figure. He was screwed. The next scene is uh, Larys Strong going and talking to Allison, and he immediately is like freaking Sherlock Holmesing this whole, <laughs> whole <laughs> thing. Character, yeah, he's I in there with his, see those feet. Yeah, he's in there with his pipe, and he's like, "Oh, that's interesting. You got some uh, morning tea over here, and you're looking at books. <laughs> well, let me just devise everything that you're doing." And, 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 and I literally, and, yeah, and I literally the whole time I'm watching that scene, I'm probably like thinking, Allison's probably just like, "You can't see my seat, motherfucker." It's <laughs> <laughs> <Gets> my feet. <laughs> She doesn't. She hasn't done that since last season. No, and I'm wondering. I'm like, does that deal no good anymore? Like, <laughs> <Table. laughs> so well, she's, she's getting the, satisfied for real. He's yeah. the official uh, master of whispers now. He's right. got a. He's got an official job. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. Well, but but he's also still reporting to her, which is why he came to visit her. Uh, right yeah. There to kind of give her a rundown of what happened in the small council and mm-hmm. all that other stuff. But I I do love like just how observant he is. Like he, he like just glances at that teapot that's out there he's like oh i know what that is yep mm-hmm. and, and then why couldn't and, it be just a cup of tea because it's in a special box so there's a special little it's a special morning, morning after tea, but, yes, yeah. and, and also we <laughs> see that in many ways how she has been very much kind of i mean granted she stayed because she had cramps because of the morning tea but or moon tea but how she basically is morning kind of after tea. <laughs> <laughs> how she's ba- it kind of is very indicative of her diminished power this mm-hmm. season as well because initially it was just like who's there and no one's listening to her and now she's not even in the council at all. Yeah, but but Larry is like, he sees like all the books that she's reading, all the research that she's doing. She's seen, uh, she's seen how, you know, she is around Kristen Cole and all this stuff. Like, and it's very easy for him to kind of put two and two together. Yeah. And, uh, but he, he doesn't lord it over her. No. Uh, he, he, he just, he stores that away for like future references. Like, okay. Yeah. Now I know what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's just pocketing that information. It's like, yeah, it might be useful later. I'm not yeah. going to use it against you yet. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next scene, we kind of already talked about this. Uh, we got so excited about the episode <laughs> that yeah. we talked about uh, Damon uh, in Heron Hall and he takes the drink from... Falling into a K-hole. Yeah, from the, from the witch lady. <laughs> Alice. Who's Alice. Alice Rivers. Rivers, okay. Um, and she basically just exposition dumps the whole reason why everything is happening to him. Mm-hmm. And it all makes 100% And just sense. to confer, and just to add something, the reason why he is, has the last name Rivers so in Westeros, the bastards, depending on what kingdom they're in. Yeah, they're named after the, like, snow is the north, north and rivers, rivers is the riverlands. River yeah. yeah. Uh, sand is Dorne. Yes. It, yeah, it all makes sense. Okay. Um, my question is, who is she in this castle? Is she the daughter of something? Why is she living here? She's, I forgot whose bastard she is. Somebody in the Riverlands, obviously. Obviously, one of the Strongs. She's a, I think she's a she's strong, strong She's bastard. a strong <laughs> Yeah. Okay. An actual strong, strong is, Do you still call a woman a bastard? Yes. Like, it is. The same oh, yeah. thing? Okay. It's not, it's not like a bastardette or something like that? A bastardess? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious. I don't know. Well, also in, in the books, there's a speculation as to like how old she actually is. Yeah, yes. she, she might be 200 years old. She, she might, might be 200. So, I love that shit so much. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, and also one of the reasons why Damon accepted that drink is because like he he hadn't slept for like a week. Mm-hmm. That, like yeah, he, like he mm-hmm. keeps having these weird dreams and he wakes up and he he's like not rested, and so like he was basically like I just want to sleep, you know. So, yeah, like he was. There's the, speculation like, that Alice saw the original conquering. No way. She That's could crazy. be that old. Oh yeah, that would make her at least a hundred. At least right? Yeah, wow, hundred ish. Hundred ish. Hmm. I hope they dive into that a little bit. I hope they just keep hinting. She's so powerful. She's so She's cool. She's a great character. I yeah. love watching. She is a witch. There's yeah. no denying that. Oh, for sure. Uh, okay, so we get to the another council meeting. I love this episode. It's all council meetings up until the big yes. moment. Uh-huh. Um, Damon is there talking with some of the lords of the Riverlands. He's trying to convince them to get on board. But don't forget, he doesn't even remember how he got Dude, to Dude, he, he's like, he sips the tea. He freaking zones out. And then he pops up and he's like, I'm at a table right now. <laughs> who? He, he goes, who the hell are you? And he's like, but. We've been talking and, for like 20 Yeah, minutes. everybody's like, bro. <laughs> and also, he... Get your shit together. Yeah. He, he sees his dead wife as the uh, cupbearer. Yes. Coming around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was it the... Was I thought it was his daughter. Version? Was it no, his daughter? No, no, that was Lena. Was, was it the it? adult version or the younger version? It was the adult. It was, it was the adult version. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I thought it was his daughter. No. Oh. 
Okay. They don't all look alike, dude. Ah! Oh, <laughs> why are you going to throw me under the bus like that, man? That was last season. I don't remember what she looks like. All Valerians look alike, dude. <laughs> Those got white hair. I don't know. It was one of them. Uh, okay. Moving on. Thanks, Charles. Uh, but, That's funny. Aegon <laughs> goes back. Uh, he's in the, another oh, small council meeting. But, but okay. Before we move on, though. Like, yeah. So, like, Damon does have the meeting with, uh, was it Blackfire? Well, whoever was on the side, it was the, the winning side. Or the Brackens? Brackens. I, I think it was the Blackwoods. Okay. That, that Blackwoods are Blacks. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so, so bas basically, he kind of like susses out that, uh, you know, the, the Blackwoods are kind of like the military might of the Riverlands right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the guy who's there meeting with him is kind of on the fence about, uh, you know, kind of, like, joining them. But uh, by the end of this council meeting, like, uh, they basically pledge themselves to Damon. Yeah. You know what? Here's I don't know why, because Damon's all like, woo oh, he's, he's in woo-woo land. <laughs> yeah. But here's what I'm thinking. That was the boy who killed the Bracken. Yeah, yeah it was. Yes. It was. Yeah, so he's kind of a bad... He's a bit of a wily badass He's now. a baddie. He was oh, the boy. From the beginning of the, the first... boy who of... killed the Bracken with the sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got in that little tussle, and that's that kid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because he mentions, like, oh, yeah, I was at her... Yeah, I was there. For her and hand. I survived. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jesus. Well, yeah. Isn't that... Um, like, like he's a, he's a big character in the books. Like, he's like this wild man, like, warrior type guy. Who, yeah. Like, whenever he goes into battle, he's just, like, kills tons of people. <laughs> I want to. I want to. I want to see him in uh, in the next scene. I just. I just read ahead. <laughs> okay. What do you mean uh, about no. about Alice Rivers? I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> are you spoiling? For I'm, I just are you are like, you book reading? I'm, no, I'm, I'm reading an article <laughs> about Alice Rivers. Yes, and I should not have done that. It was powerful. <laughs> Son of a bitch! I just ruined the whole show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she is not to be messed with, man. <laughs> I'll give you a witch brew, and you'll forget the yes. whole. Yeah, place. yeah, yeah. There you go. He'll Drink end up here Drink next this. Tuesday, and he'll be like, uh, "Wait, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what day is it?" <laughs> All right, so the next scene is uh, the the mother of the year, Allison. And but here's Aegon. the thing: she's in Aegon's quarters, yes. his apartment. She's looking for her books. Yes, yeah. And he's like, "What are you doing?" I love this little interaction because she assumed that he was just like flippant with these books. Ah, I just got rid of them. Like, what do you mean? You threw them away? I didn't burn them, Mom. I just moved them out of my room. Like, what yeah. the? Mm. I, that, little, heathen, do you think I that little interaction was <laughs> interesting to me because she assumed the worst out of him. Yeah. And he was like, "Mom, yeah. what the hell?" She she. Puts him over the edge. She yes. well, this this yes. little this little back and forth between yes. them two. Nothing that she said was incorrect. No. She was just so cold she was just hearted about being it. a bitch. Yeah, she's yes. like, look, you need to just sit down and shut up and learn from the best of us because that's yeah. what you're supposed to do. Do you have any idea? Yeah, the sacrifices that were made to put you in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, it was just bad selection. timing because of like all the stuff because of everything that else that happened. Yeah. Go ahead, Jude. Also, talk to us. If burning them had been easier, Aegon would have done that. He doesn't give a shit. He always takes the easiest routes. He mm -hmm. says, get rid of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? You think so? Because he's, yeah, he's, he's lazy. lazy. That's his biggest he's thing. Lazy. He's lazy. If there had been a fire there, he would have been like, hey, throw those in there. He doesn't give a Good shit. Call. It mm -hmm. wasn't that he was like, God, I would never. He was just like, yeah, I got rid of them. I, didn't uh, I took, I took I a different meaning from him. that. I did too. Also, but either what, way, what was interesting is, is that those were his father's books and he's mm. in his father's chamber. And so, like, I think that uh, there might have been a little bit of sentimentality there where he's like, I'm not going to burn my father's books. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't he, already, know. he already destroyed the model. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, 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 I mean, just lost his son. Shit, so. I think he's, he's constantly reminded that he's in his father's shadow. And he's... By so his grandfather, by his younger brother, yeah. by his mom. I, and he's so intent on everyone taking him seriously because suddenly he's the king. So you have to... Treat me like the king, and therefore I'm wise, right? I, but the crown does not give you knowledge; does yeah. not give you wisdom. Go ahead. I get I get a little confused about the the timeline that's going on here because mm -hmm. I had I was under the impression that, you know, given the travel and all this kind of stuff that that everything is going on, I I was under the impression that like a year had gone by. Mm. It's been a couple of weeks. But but there was that there was that scene. It was, with, where she said, you yeah. know, I just lost my husband like three weeks ago. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, wait a second. That, does, that doesn't make any sense. To <laughs> yeah, because because Kristen Cole had to travel stuff, all with his stuff, army. He's like going through portals. I mean, or something. <laughs> no, no, well, he, doesn't have, he doesn't yeah, have little yeah, finger yeah, teleportation. Yeah, guys, guys. So like Kristen Cole's in the crown lands, which is basically right outside of King's Landing. Yeah. So like mm. it's, it's not like he's going up north, which would take like a month or two or something yeah. like that. He's literally going to their neighbors. Okay. So, so, all right. So, so like, just, like, the, being, being 
three weeks out from King's Landing, like it it makes sense. Okay. Many of these houses in the Crownlands are not super big. They're not like the Heron Halls or the River Runs or whatnot. These right. are just very small. Smaller keeps. I wouldn't say they're. But tiny so, like, how long does it like, take a boat to go from King's Landing it'd to? It'd be like to riding a horse from Dragon my house to Alex. Dragonstone. Dragonstone. <laughs> Dragonstone's not far away from King's Landing. It's probably a day. I'm guessing. Two yeah. Days. Yeah. Because you know, you go back to like Eric Arik thing. It's like, yeah, you need to go over there and kill the queen. It's like, okay. Well, only get on five a boat. minutes later, he's there. Yeah. It's like, so like Damon. Okay, Damon so. went to Damon went to King's Landing, hired uh, Cheese and Blood. And then he went Maybe back. He has a dragon too, so he's faster. He is a little faster. Uh, and fun. then, well, he went there on a boat though. Rhaenyra did the same thing. Yeah, he left his dragon. At yeah, Dragonstone. he went on a boat. He did a tea pain. So that, that a boat, boat motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that <laughs> boat trip has got to be like a day or two. With tops. You, but you know, Corlys and and Rhaenyra and them, they they're going back and forth with Dragonstone to Boat World all all the time. <laughs> you, you know, it's like how far is that? I don't know, dude. You, you know, yeah. I mean, I get what you're saying, though. It's just, boat, son of a bitch. <laughs> it just, it, I, I, I feel like, I just feel like everything's the time. R R River Mark weird. is like directly north of um, River Run. No, not River Run. Uh, Drift Mark. Drift Mark yeah. is, is directly north of um, Dragonstone. Dragonstone. It's one. It's one of the Crownland houses. Yeah. It's everything. Everything that we're doing so far in this show seems to be pretty tight knit. It's all within that it, little. It, I mean, the, it, the, it, the, the, like the, the two brothers between, flew to fucking the wall. It, it, it's like the how long does it? That's a continent. Yeah, okay, had, even had on had a dragon, well, here's the it thing. still takes a while. Well, here's, he, that's would take less time because of the dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bader, we're talking like the the distance between Vegas and Reno type thing. Ooh, okay. oh. on a dragon. <laughs> No, 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 no. You're telling me the entire Westeros is the size of Nevada? No. I'm saying like from Dragonstone to King's Landing, it's like, you know, from Reno to, to Vegas. Or Sparks. I just made that drive. Or Sucks. <laughs> it's, it's a, a long way. Yeah, I just did it too. It's it a really long way. Was it at eight, eight hours? It blows. How fast yeah, do dragons that. fly, though? Let's be real. How fast? There's it, depends, no... it depends on the age and the size. It's like they're not, they're not, they don't have goggles. They don't have a little cockpit. Vagar's kind of slow. So here's the thing. Vagar so would, would be slow. Caraxes like, and Melis would be faster. Sure. But how fast? You know, faster than Vagar. We're talking you know, 30 they, miles they, an hour? They, you know, when the queen... Faster. 45? The, the queen disappeared and went to, to town to talk to her, her friend, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and they're all acting like she's been gone. I got the impression the queen had been gone like months no oh no, the no, queen's no. gone we can't everything but here's the thing but it was like what a day either way the queen's been missing for two days either oh way my God. the fact that no one knows where she is in the castle that's still a part of concern i just i guess what everyone should is, always know where she is at all times i, I wish they would be a little more clear about sure how long much time has gone by and mm -hmm. you know things how long things take well, well when, it's just when it's they very flat out tell you it's been three weeks i right. don't know how much but that's what i said that was when i got confused yeah. it was like wait a but, second but, but when, well, three weeks when, when, when you're talking about jace you know like so like he had two missions so the first was to fly to the vale and meet with the errands and then his, his next was to fly to winterfell and then that winterfell he accompanied them up north to the wall yeah and so like jace was gone for like a long time and he didn't hear about his brother's death until he was at the wall i mean yeah. i mean so so it's like i guess what Kristen cole is not margin an army from here to reno in two days. But did you hear that how? It is not happening. <laughs> it's going to take a month. <laughs> so I'm just. You're going to need to suspend your. Well, you also, you also have to remember that <laughs> the army started getting bigger once he started yeah. taking down right. those. I, like when, he, when he, we first left King's Landing, like he was given shit because he's like, we only have like 2,000 men. No, it was less than that. Or, or, it's like, it's taking him a month to get from here to tell It was a couple call. hundred men. Okay. And then by the time. Like, <laughs> but but, but he, he took like three or four keeps on the way there. So like and, tripled and, or quadrupled. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he just like walked in and said, oh, I'm going to plant my flag here. Pretty <laughs> much. There was no fighting. There was no. Pretty much. Yeah. You know. I, mean, I claim this keep. Well, a lot of them, right. well, a lot of them <laughs> didn't have like a huge fighting force that could have really repelled the force. Because he, he's coming with whatever they had in King's Landing and then some of the high tower forces that Gwen had. Gwen, which is Allison's brother. Yeah. So. So um, two scenes happened that we kind of already talked about. Uh, we get Chris and Cole and he's basically like. Let's get our army. We're gonna move on on Rook's rest. I yeah, think is what it's called. Rest. He's like, we're gonna move on Rook's rest. And, and Allison's brother's the like, first dude. Time somebody <laughs> says Rook's rest in the show. All of the book nerds went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, Allison's brother. I don't even remember his Wayne. stupid name. Wayne. Um, <laughs> he's like, bro, you can't do that right now. And he's like, no, we're gonna do it. You don't have a choice. And you don't have a choice. And you're like, but, but, but. No, I, no. I freaking hate Allison's brother so much. <laughs> he's, I don't like him. I want you to hate Cole more. As I said, <laughs> like, I most people hate Chris and Cole, and I'm like, yeah, he's all right. I kind of like him. Started this whole fucking war. I don't give a shit. Yeah. That other guy's annoying. <laughs> He's a but, whiny but, but, little bitch. <laughs> yeah, and so, and then we also, I don't know, if, yeah, we see the scene where, we yeah. see where uh, Vagar's hidden. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We get the hint that they have other plans that they're not telling people about. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we get back to uh, Rhaenyra. It comes back to, to Dragonstone and their whole council is like, oh my God, where have you been for three days? It would have been the last 12 hours. <laughs> uh, you know, and, I took uh, a boat. They kind of catch her up on everything that's happening. She's like, all right, well, I guess I have no choice. And that means that the gambit, the gambit worked. Yes. Like, Chris and Cole's idea is like, if we do this, they're going to send it back. Because drag. it was somebody from... Yeah. I think, you know what it was, is that Rook's Rest is the keep of House Staunton. Yeah, who so, was the guy who helped her get to King's Landing. Yes. He's like, wait a minute. But he's also on the council as well. Yeah. So, well, well, no, no, it was a different guy. I, I'd, I'd also say that this was uh, Amon's strategy, not Kristen Cole's. Because if you remember before Blood and Cheese broke in, there was that little powwow yeah. where yes. they had like that map. And, yeah. and Amon's the strategist. I think Cole's just like the, the, hammer. the, the executioner. Okay. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah, I think I, I agree with that. Uh, Eamon probably came up with the idea. I mean, Eamon's definitely the, the smartest one. He though. definitely is. Yeah, yeah for, sure. for sure. And I'm really waiting. And I know Damon's busy in Hall doing fuck all, but I want to see him go, you know what? Enough is enough. I got to take this freaking Amy oh, kid out. Oh, you're you're, you're, you're going to see something. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen this season, though. You don't think so? No, no. no we got, what, three episodes season. left? That's going to happen probably in season three. Okay. Yeah. There's, so this. There's a point where, like, Eamon, and I'm not spoiling anything. Eamon is just like, he thinks he is on the same level as Damon. Yes. And there's a point where he's like, I'm calling Damon out. And Damon just goes, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I got chills when you said that. Yeah. <laughs> well, going back to, to Damon's kind of vision earlier in, in the episode where he saw himself as Amon, uh, they're basically like two of the same people. I mean, yeah. their na the name's an anagram. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's pretty, that was pretty obvious from the beginning of the show. It was like, oh, this is his like younger version of himself kind of a thing. Mm. Maybe. Mm. Mm. Oh, I don't know if I like this or not. He thinks he is. Uh, okay, so. But he's not battle tested the way that Damon no, is. No, no, not at all. He's very green when it comes to And again, to like, I remember, I'm so glad they hinted this out, even in season one, when Damon beheads or be beheads Vaymond. Uh, yes. And then everyone's all freaking out. And and and, and, and Eamon's like, like, ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Can I well, just even, say, go ahead. I hate the names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused Eamon right now. Eamon is the young one with the patch. So just know that. Eamon one up. Damon, Eamon, Gaiman, Flamin. Lagar, Lagar, just Lagar. So just know. Shitgar. All, all the Valerian names have a similar kind of. Bit. And some yeah. of them are named after another person exactly the same. That yeah. bastards are named after seasons. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. I mean, it, 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 when you think about it, it's a, a, like I'll give I'll give a personal example. Like for instance, for me, I can clock somebody who's of a certain tribe in Nigeria, who's Nigerian but a certain tribe, okay. based on how their name is. Yeah. Like oh, this somebody's this person's Ibo, or oh, this person's Yoruba, and that's kind of how it is with the Valerians, where it's kind of like Amond, Eris, how the name is spelled. Oh yeah, that's not even just a Valerian name; it's also like a, a Targaryen. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so it actually works in many ways. But, uh, I'm, I'm with. Butters, like <laughs> these, these, these names are so hard to get <laughs> enough already. It's not that hard. All right, it's like Joe, Bob, Frank, Dylan. But would Bobby. they stand out? <laughs> Come on, Magor the Cruel. You remember that name? All right, let's finish off this podcast talking about the moment everybody wants to talk about anyway. Yeah, okay, this final there. battle scene. Chris and Cole. He's moving and grooving. Everybody's like, you can't do it in broad daylight. And he's like, no, well, yes, we, we can. absolutely can. <laughs> and we go in full tilt. And that's what, right when Renice shows up and the battle commences. This With was... May Melis. Yeah. This oh, 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 before we go, before we get into that, most importantly, and this was, you know where I'm going. Yeah. This, we see Aegon kind of getting ready, uh -huh. getting yep. his drink on. Yep. And the only being to show him any type of affection is his, his dragon. Sunfire. dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Sunfire's so excited they're going on an adventure. He's like, oh, yeah. we're going to leave the castle? So he kind of gives him this cute little nudge. And yeah. it's, like, oh. it's, like, it's like a boy with his dog. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. exactly. I got yes. chills right now, like just thinking about the connection between a dragon and their rider. And yeah. you see that when uh, Maylis looks back at Rhaenys. <sighs> yeah. like, did I do good? Did I do good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, and, and they, and like they, a dog walk. And they paired that with when when he when Aegon went up to his dragon, yes. they immediately went over to Rhaenyra, Rhaenys. Rhaenys. Rhaenys and her dragon yeah. doing the exact same thing, yes. Yes. putting her forehead up yes. to yes. time to go to battle, old girl. She says, you know, "Back into battle." Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she yeah. says, "High Valyrian so, yeah. too." Yeah, the uh, the the, the the connection that they have with their, yeah. with their dragons. Yeah. Sunfire just thinks we're going cool. for a walk. Mm -hmm. Well, he's yeah. a pup and May still, right? He's May pretty young. Yeah, well, he's, is like back into battle. He's probably a. I'd say Sunfire is like a teenager. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. he's not he's super not small, big, but he's not small. Mm -hmm. He's not he's like basically Arax. the same as Aegon. Yeah. Yes. He's yeah. not Arax. Young, untested, 
Yeah. Going into battle. The he's most just... beautiful Sunfire, the golden, the mystery. <laughs> but we, we didn't even talk about Aegon and why. Because his mom just put him Well, we did head, talk about the edge a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But, you know, then he's... he just starts drinking. He's like, fuck it. I got to go just, make a name I, for myself. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's like, I'm going to go do this. Yeah. <laughs> really? Seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, so, well, Allison does tell him, it's like, all you have to do is, is nothing, nothing, which is what is expected of you. Mm-hmm. And, See, and that would piss me off, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm the That's fucking king. everyone tells she every single woman in the kingdom. You do nothing. You pop out babies, and then you sit down and shut the fuck up. It's like, I'll show you. She basically gelded him with her words. Yeah, yeah. So he gets a bar up his ass and he goes to the battle. <laughs> so we got three we go. dragons in the battlefield, right? We've yeah. got Aegon, Rhaenys, and Aemon with Vagar. And that freaking thing. But, but, what, but what happened? Aemon basically was going to do his thing. And then he sees his idiot brother and he's just like, oh, fuck. He, no, no, he no. He literally I, calls him an idiot. There, he, there's he the does. Scene right there. Yeah, he does call him an idiot. idiot. But when he looks at it, he goes, well, <laughs> he waits. He waits. Because yeah. he's like, okay, if he's going to distract Rhaenys and possibly even injure her, mm-hmm. then I will have the upper hand. But, but, yeah. but what's great is like, so we, we get to see the men on the ground and when they see the golden dragon up overhead yeah. and they know that the king is there, like every single one of them is like, what the fuck? Is <laughs> and Houston Cole immediately starts He's to change too. the narrative. He's yeah. like, your king is your here. King is yeah. Yeah. Which is what well, he has to. Yeah. Yeah. That was that. smart. Because, yeah. Because that's not what he expected. Because a lot of, like, Wayne was just like, is this your plan? He's like, um, yeah, yeah. Not, but, uh, we're leaning in. Yeah, yeah. No, he leaned into it, and, yeah. and he he pulled a William Wallace, you know, and yeah. he's like, "You're you are yes. we are here together, boys. Let's let's freaking fight." And everybody gets real woohoo. Yeah, yeah, yes. and then they all go back in the battle because they were retreating as soon as yeah. they saw oh. Renee show up. She, they were like, she, "Oh shit!" As soon as they saw those <laughs> flippity flops coming over the thing, nope. they were like, "No, I'm, I'm out." out. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but um, the initial kind of like confrontation between the two dragons, like you know. Uh, What's the golden one's name? Sunfire's Sunfire. getting Sunfire. Sun, sun, So Sunfire was just so outmatched. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the noises that that dragon was making as it was getting clawed and uh, twing, bitten down. Oh, it like punctured stuff. its lung. Like she grabbed it, it, it like it, ripped it, it open. It, it, like, yeah. I, I started like kind of clutching my pearls. <laughs> yeah, like, like, so bad. Yeah, like, be, because I, I, was, I was like, like I, it just reminded me of our dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because, I, think, you know, I, think, I think that's what they were trying to do in this episode. And it too, showed, you know, the, th- the, thing, the thing too was, and this was again, a very... This is what, when it comes to writing, I love when there's thought put into the strategy behind the battle. Mm -hmm. Because that's what a lot of times makes the battle much more More interesting. So Sunfire basically goes, Dracarys, no one says it like Danny. I gotta say it. Amelia Clark (laughs) says it best. (laughs) No one says it better than her. So he does Dracarys, whatever. She kind of gets through it. And then she's just completely, Melissa just beating the crap out of him. You know, Charles, if you... Like when when this episode was over, I turned to Jude and I, I was like, "That was the most epic battle scene in all of Game of Thrones." Yes, and the reason I say that is because like you can point to the Battle of Winterfell, you can point to the Battle of the Bastards. Mm-hmm. Those battles didn't make any sense though. Like like Bad visu- visually, they 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 were cool. Yes, but from a storytelling point of view, they were just a mess and yeah. didn't make any sense. This battle from beginning to end made perfect sense. Yes, and and like there there was proper build up, there was proper setup and payoff. Like the, the the part where you see uh, Vagar's wings just kind of like you know right above the tree line and yes. everyone's like oh my oh, god and there was like actual build up to like the three dragons kind of mm-hmm. like dancing with in the sky and like because the, there's yeah and, and the battle had ebbs and flows mm-hmm. yes and, and that moment where Renice is flying away and 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 she can leave and she looks behind her she's and like she, I'm not losing this battle well, well, <laughs> well, she, well, well, no, well no it wasn't that she was losing it was she was like this was her mission this was her duty and. You can see the change come over the resolve, face. yeah. And and she she yeah. goes, uh, Mel- Melise attack, to ba- ba- yeah, attack yeah. To Melise. To battle, yeah. yeah. And also, you know, back to also what you're saying. In many ways, if you want to add nor layers, maybe part of her realizes this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for me. If oh, I because she had barbecued all those motherfuckers. This, the, this would yeah. not be happening. Well, Damon said that to her, right? Yeah. She was like, "You could have had the chance to end this whole thing." She's like, "And oh, and kind of right." <laughs> there's there's also the the thing here where she she's fighting her nephew like, like yeah. this is family yeah mm-hmm. and and there's a sadness to her when she's like returning to the battle and, Eve best and is stuff so like that like i yeah. think she knew she was gonna yeah eat it though you but and I mean? also i think she when she saw vagar was down but she didn't see the body she's just like i need to make sure this is finished and going to the army their point of view oh dude and, but, but, but hold on yeah, yeah yeah the thing is no one saw the battle between Balerion and Silverwing when it was Magar versus Aegon the Uncrowned. Mm-hmm. That happened, I think, over King's Landing. 
And it was very over very quickly because Silverwing was no match for Valerian. This was the Black Dread, the one that died. So this is the first time a lot of these people are seeing not just dragon. two dragons, but three dragons. Three dragons, yeah. yeah. And I, there was a, so two things I want to mention. First is uh, when, mm -hmm. when Amond shows up mm -hmm. and he sees the two fighting and he's like, eh, I'm going to barbecue them both. Take them both and out. And Eamon's yeah. yeah. point of view, he's like, oh my God, my brother's here. He's going to help me. No. And then oh, you saw it, shit. It was, it, was basically, it was basically a Lion King moment. Yeah. Like Mufasa yeah. and yeah, Scar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Long live the king. The <laughs> end result is what happens in the book, but a lot of that was just in the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was actually, so a, it was actually a, ta it was a trap because. A, yeah. Eamon deciding to go against his brother is, it was just in the show and yeah. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Um, mm. now, mm. Also in the book, the book, the storytellers say that when um, Rhaenys was up against uh, Vagar. The, uh, the Vagar and Sunfire, the, the storytellers say if she had just been against Vagar, she would have had a chance. That's sure. how good of a battler her yeah. Sure, she, yeah. She mm -hmm. And I could 100% see but, that. But against two dragons, she knew she was going to die. But, but the most heartbreaking moment in this entire episode is when uh, Vagar has Maelys by the neck. Yeah. 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 And Maelys looks behind her <laughs> and, and looks at, at uh, Rhaenys and... That they just look, share that, this look. Well, yeah. well it, it, it's a look where it's like, I'm sorry, I failed you. Mm -hmm. And uh, then and the light goes out of her yeah, eyes. And, and then the, the dragon dies and then they, they, they fall to the ground. And man, like I teared up. Yeah. No yeah. shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the two dragons, Melis and Vagar. Mm -hmm. So those were the two dragons that... Be, that belonged to the parents of Viserys and Daemon. Mm. And those two dragons mm. flew together because their riders were in love. And they were together. They were oh. they were basically They were bonded. They were bonded. bonded. Oh. That's true, and Maylis. those two dragons are the ones that had to battle in this episode. Oh. And Vagar killed the other one. Yeah, he didn't. She didn't seem like she gave a shit though. Like Vagar just seems like a freaking oh, uh, force of also, nature. Also, also, wasn't they had to crazy. go to battle. Yeah. Also, to do their duty. Was, wasn't Vagar... Um, uh, Renice's daughter's dragon. Yeah. Yes. And and so like they had like you know flown together yes. like quite recently, and uh, and you know his pre uh, Vagar's previous writer was literally the offspring of the woman that he just killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or she just killed. It's weird. Yeah. Not Lots weird, of, but yeah. I was just it, it, it's tragic. Yeah. It is yeah, tragic. It's tragic. I just um, the other scene that I really that really struck <laughs> me is when they both fell to the ground and Vagar hits and it was like a freaking just <laughs> everything around it, it fell like over. Dude, it was like TNT. Yeah, they did such a freaking great job at yeah. giving this weight the to weight. These CGI creatures. You know what I mean? Like sometimes when you have CGI creatures on screen, dinosaurs, no Godzilla, yeah. whatever, there's no weight to I'm, it. I'm, I'm watching it right now, and they look heavy. Fine. Yeah, they yeah. look heavy. Yeah. And you know, they just the and also slow thing, motion of the wing. And also, yeah, we the, forgot the mm -hmm. important part. Let's go back a bit. Um, so when Aemon barbecues both of them, particularly hits Aegon. First off, Aegon was spiraling, and his blood, the blood of Sunfire was, was like splattering say, all over. Is it acidic? I think, I'm not sure. Because they didn't seem very happy I mean, to be it's, not, it's not just <laughs> it's blood. Not pleasant. Yeah. Um, in, in the book, they say, like, when the when dragon's blood hits, it basically sets you on fire. Yeah. Whoa. You. Yeah. yeah. So basically, sense. Aegon It lands, might just be, crash. like, boiling. I don't yeah. know. Mm. So Aegon basically crash lands in the forest. Yeah. You know. And Chris and Cole sees it, and he's like, I gotta go rescue my king. And then gets knocked And then over. just gets knocked the shit out. And, and I'm like, and yeah, I think right. that's when, And I think that's when Vagar fell the first time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's where Mel Melise and Vagar were kind of like, you know, spiraling towards the ground as they were fighting with each other. But one of the things that really stuck out to me with this episode is, you know, how in like, season, like uh, you know, Game of Thrones, the, the series, like they were always talking about how expensive dragon, like adding dragons to, to the show were. And like with this episode, it was like, the CGI was on. Point. That was great. Yes. Like, like they, you could tell that they spent like a great deal of time and effort thinking through this battle, planning it out, animating it. Yep. Like, like at no point was the uncanny valley ever an issue. Like, <laughs> at no point yes. were, were you watching it and being like, ah, oh, that CGI looked kind of janky. It, was it like, looked good. It and looked like yeah. like we were actually watching like dragons mm -hmm. fighting. And, and even and even more so. And it showed you again the size, the weight, how when Vagar was coming, you saw Vagar is not fast. No, you know? no. So when, even when it was going to the battle, it was, just, it was like Spruce Goose, basically just coming <laughs> out of the I got it. It's so much weight. Because there was a scene where he like went, like, yeah. like the original attack, when he was like, okay, it's time to go. And he's like, whoa, 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 wait, never, because he sees Aegon. Even when then, he was like, okay, fine. She, she just, <laughs> just had a just, back yeah, down. Just falls down. Yeah. And it's like, Jesus Christ, this yeah. thing is huge. Uh, the one last thing, I just want to freaking <laughs> praise the show even more, which I'm sure people are sick of hearing. But there is a scene 
that for all intents and purposes did not need to be this beautiful. Mm. Kristen Cole gets up, staggers, yes. walks up a I hill, past the horse. Yes. Uh, it's all just, there's no reason for the scene to be like this. It's just, they were like, yeah, we can make it look really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It's just Kristen Cole walking up this hill with the skyline in the back and the smoke and the death. And he's just, I'm just looking at it right now on my phone going, why did it have to be that nice? Like they, oh, they took so is, much that care. Is, that is money well spent yeah. on screen. Look, this yeah. this scene, scene. A scene I thought you were yeah, talking about. Right yeah, it's too. beautiful. Yeah. Is when he walks up and he says, our king fell and it's just ash. Oh yeah, that's oh, another yeah, good one. The, the armor, the armor. The guy yeah, the is armor is just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. that's it's, another great one. <laughs> what? I don't know if I want to say, is he dead? Is the king dead? We don't know. I, I, we have to see. Can we tell I'm, you? No, don't spoil it. Okay. You'll have to see next week. Yeah. So, so uh, okay. And going back to that. Yeah. Chris and Cole goes and he finds he finds Aegon. Aemon's already there, and he has cat's paw, and he's sitting yeah. there well, and he's looking. Well, what, he, what he what did he draw first? He had his sword out. Dark sister. Yeah. Actually, no. Damon has dark sister. Sorry, he had his his sword. Well, the Valerian sword. Yeah, he had a Valerian sword. Yeah. Didn't yeah. they? They got gifted because there was two of them. So and one. Well, to, I, I I thought that that was um. The king's sword because uh, was it dark sister so dark sister damon, damon has, has dark sister and or then there's dark um fire? there's black fire is the king's sword yeah so, okay. so i i took that as like that was black fire and basically Aemon 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 it. claimed it because he's claiming the king because that's true black fire a lot of people forget black fire was not a great sword like ice was black fire was a bastard sword mm. a half a half a long sword and a half basically but it belonged to Aegon the Conqueror. Yes. And, and so symbolically, like the, that's the king's sword. Yeah. Yes. He, he took Cat's paw, he took the sword. So, but what we see first, remember, Cole comes up, he sees... Yeah, I'm He's like, what you doing? Yeah. <laughs> he, he had the sword, like he was going to go finish the job because we see Sunfire, as far as we see, Sunfire is still alive, badly injured. Mm -hmm. We see Aegon's body. We don't know his condition. They didn't really focus too They didn't. Closely. It was just, a, it was a wide shot yeah, this is a, I, of both So like, I just watched it, right? I, yeah. I got it on right here. And Cole walks up. He's kind of heartbroken. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, well, his king might have just died. Aemon, and he also Aemon, knows Aemon, what Aemon, Aemon Aemon was, Aemon. He also Aemon. knew what Aemon he, was he about just, to do. He has he has the dagger, uh -huh. but he, he, he just and he, and he just points up there, and he walks up there, and he just you see his the king's armor. I guess it's, I guess it's the king. Yes, just laying well, there. You his can't really armor is melted. Into yeah, his flesh yeah, and he just like immediately just falls to his knees. Dragon fire. But I think no. I think but I think the most important thing is. He walks up. He sees Aemon with his sword drawn. Right. Yes. Assuming, but he's putting it in his sheath. Whoa, 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 whoa. He didn't do it until after Cole called him out. Because he's just like, Aemon! And then he's like, what? Uh, <laughs> what? I'm, I'm going to watch it right now. <laughs> Kristen right. Cole comes over the hill. Yes. Yeah. Aemon doesn't know he's there yet. No. Nope. He didn't have his sword out while he was on Dragon. Aemon's Dragon. walking away playing. from Kristen Cole with his sword out. And then he starts putting it away. And, and, then, Cole, and then Cole calls him. So he's already in the process of putting the sword back in the sheath. Only after Cole calls him. I disagree. Yeah. I think it happened right around the... He was like, okay, I'm going to put yeah. this away. And then, and then he stops. Because he's thinking, oh, he's going to finish the job. I, I think, think he was going to finish it with, I with think Cat's Paw. Cole thinks that he was going to finish the job. Yeah. I mean, either way, I mean, a pretty, a, either way, Aemon's a badass. <laughs> I mean, he's both. He's already a kinslayer. Might as well be a king. Slayer. Why not, man? <laughs> king, um, yeah. I didn't realize that Aemon's armor was melted into him. Oh, yeah. That's I didn't, no, no, not Aemon. Well, Aegon. Hey, we're going to see. Aegon. Aegon. Oh yeah, that's what he means. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Aegon. I didn't realize that his his armor was melted. Yeah. Into once his you fire. get hit with dragon fire, nothing can withstand. And think, so, about, and think about it like I mean, this: as the dragon gets older, the dragon fire gets hotter. Right. Aegon is currently the oldest dragon. He's pretty young. Westeros. So. Yeah, I'm looking at that scene right now too. I don't. Uh, okay, that's interesting. So is uh, I'm just gonna ask because I'm sure it's probably bullshit. But the whole um, talk to us. Uh, Daenerys Targaryen not being able to be burned by fire is bullshit. Yes, it's not in the books. It's not in the books. So they're not. They're not it's following. A one time thing because of magic. They're yeah. not following this rule in no. this show. Oh, I'd forgotten all about that. Remember that? Yeah. Like no, nothing. No fire. But she I used mean, that as like a Deus Ex Machina like seven times in that. Yeah, show. but she burned no. her brother too. So it was only supposed to be her, but it was only supposed to be one time. One time because of magic, and then they just kept it throughout the show. But that oh. wasn't. That wasn't a thing. Killing, thing. Killing them softly one time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, phenomenal episode, guys. Yes. I, I this was by far the best. I know we were kind of like, oh man, when's anything gonna freaking happen Something in this show? Man, we, we got our mix of soap opera nonsense, yeah, <laughs> and we and got dragons. some battles and dragons, yeah. and, and we lost, that's what I want. and we lost a key character that actually mattered, yeah, and had weight to it, yeah, because she, she let and, and, and also another thing, too, yes, long and lean face, the queen that never was, she was 55. Should, but, it should have always been her in that seat. But the thing is, the thing, too, is, like you said about the dragons having weight, 
when Melise hit that castle, that was like, yeah, boom. same thing. The wall collapses, yes. the whole deal. Yeah, it was like almost castle's like, fucked. Yeah. Oh yeah, the castle's done. And yeah. I don't think they needed the castle anyway. They just no. wanted to send a message. But yes. their plan worked. But here's the thing: both incurred losses. That's the thing to uncover. Obviously, there was a bigger loss on the black side, but think about it. The king and his dragon, a healthy young dragon, uh-huh. are injured. So that's bad in many ways. Granted, yeah. he was kind of a puppet, but still, it's still a bad look. As long as he's still alive, yeah. which I don't know, you don't know. He could be dead. They could be like, I mean, they're not... No one no in this show, he could be easily be dead. Yeah. Just to throw a wrench in the works. <laughs> wouldn't shock me at all. It wouldn't shock me either. So. Uh, but I don't get the impression that they would kill somebody like, like I hope gone off. In this way, I feel like it would be a little bit. Bigger. Aegon's kind of growing on me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, like let's let's just say, like for next episode, what happens if Aemon uh, basically takes over his brother's seat and becomes the new king? I mean, well, he well, probably yeah. He, well, it, here's the thing: if Aemon, if Aegon is still alive, he will not be king. He would probably be the prince regent. So I think what Aemon. Eamon would love to be king, but I don't think he would fit the role well because he wants to be a man of action. Well, somebody yeah. has to rule. And if the king is alive but incapacitated, that's that's prime real estate for Eamon because he still gets to be the man of action, but he also still gets to be in charge. Yes. So I think he's probably like, I don't want to kill him because then if I become king, which I don't know, is that the line of succession? Is, is Eamon yeah. well, next? He's not, is he? Well, they screwed it up because yeah, Mailer's not Yeah, they didn't give him his other son. Because Mailer's not here, so it actually would In the show, Eamon's yeah. the next in line, right? Yes, he would be. Well, okay. It, yeah, because so, it wouldn't unless be Unless they Jihara. give the throne to a girl. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that's, the whole, that's their whole thing that they're kvetching about. The crazy so queen. <laughs> well, right, Eamon's no, uh, what? Has, he has a daughter. Well, he's a ba- she's a baby, though. Six-year-old. The little one in the crib? Yeah, she was six. She was the same age as the son that they killed. They're twins. That baby was like three. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be, Eamon would be the next in line at this point if they're going by the male progenitor. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think he wants to be king because he still wants to be on the battlefield. He, he doesn't want to rule. He, to he be, just wants to kill. He wants to be the warrior. I want you to stop looking at me because I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, don't spoil anything. Talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop yeah, yeah. looking okay, at me. Okay, all right. <laughs> All right, we're going to end it there so we don't spoil anything for people who might not have read the books. Um, but this was definitely one of the best episodes of TV I've seen. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of garbage out there. This so is much. what people want to see. Yeah. This is what people want to be Do you guys immersed in. Have anybody looked at the numbers that this show is doing? Is it oh. doing Game of Thrones season two type numbers? I don't think it is. I don't think it is think either, so. but I don't, like, by all rights, this show's better than the Game of Thrones was. <laughs> At least not the, the first couple seasons. seasons. Yeah, not about, the first four seasons. Not you don't first know about that? Seasons. Not the first four seasons. Hmm. Yeah. A lot of people were disgruntled with season one of this show because it was mostly set up. It was, and yeah. It was, the and, couple, and, the time, and the time jumps, too. And even the first couple episodes of this season, we mm, were all frustrated. This thoughts. is the first great episode of this season. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. Okay. Again, and again, this is where all the payoff and setup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there, was, there was a lot of setup. A lot of but, setup. Well, yeah. well, if it wasn't for all that setup, this episode wouldn't have had the impact. Yes. That's also true. true. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Interesting. I'm just curious if this show is going to have similar, maybe not more, but a similar now we got, cultural now effect. Now we got 10 more episodes for some setup in the middle of for season, season three. three. <laughs> well, yeah. we, we never forget, this is a short season too. Eight episodes? Yeah. 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 So we're yeah. halfway there. Yeah, we're halfway. Yeah, this was the midpoint episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, if, this was, if this was the middle of the season um, what, what do they call that? Mid-season finale. Uh, mid-season finale. Yeah, then Ooh, then episode eight's going to be a banger. It better be. It better. <laughs> I hope so. Then we got five years away for season three. Yeah. And again, um, do you I have thought, any predictions? Uh, predictions. Well, Eamon's down and out, not dead. I don't think he's dead. You mean Aegon. Aegon, sorry. Uh, Wrong Targaryen. Yeah. Aegon's down and out, maybe not like, dead. They're going to have a cool scar now. They're going to limp him back to King's Landing, and they're going to berate him and tell him he's an idiot, and well, he's just he going to... He won't be able to hear them. You can't say anything. Oh, it's sorry. his prediction. <laughs> okay, you sorry. know too much. Sorry. Just let him go. Sorry. Just, no, I just keep <laughs> going. Ignore what I said. Ignore what I said. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think they're going to cripple uh, Aeon to the point where he doesn't, like nothing he does matters. And he's just going to be this this figurehead that they use as like a, look, it's King Aemon and, or Aegon. His standard. And Aemon's going to go out there and just freaking wreck house until he comes up against Daemon. And when that happens, it's going to be like, yeah, you thought you were hot shit. Didn't you? And then that, I think that's my prediction for at least this half of the season, the next half. Uh, what about you? You got anything? Nope. Nope. 
<laughs> Thanks for playing the game, Dutch. <laughs> I think you're. I think you're really close. Okay, you're yeah. close. All right. you're close. don't spoil it. He read too much. He on did. Oh, he read too much. You spoiled it for yourself, huh? Well, just this that is one what character. happens. Just yes. that one. Character. This is what happens. Yeah, <laughs> I've kind of forgotten about it already. Okay, okay. good. Uh, any other final thoughts before I close out the show? Anybody got anything? Yes, I was sir. glad yeah. that finally something happened. Okay, um, I loved the dragon fighting. Uh, I loved how, at least with. Sunfire and Melise, they gave them, we saw so much personality mm -hmm. in those dragons. Mm -hmm. We know that, you know, Vagar's just a grumpy, war torn bitch. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> she just don't care. She just do whatever. But I loved, I think, with like what you, I think you mentioned with Melise, how it's just like, I'm sorry I failed you. Mm -hmm. And just even looking back, did I do good? Did I do good? And Sunfire is just happy to be out there. <laughs> I <made me> <laughs> The personality, even though we didn't see that much with these dragons this season, just seeing that was just really added to the heartbreak when they got injured and yeah. killed, you know. So I I thought that part was great. And I'm glad that again, they gave Kristen Cole something else to do other than just being, you know, Allison's sex toy. Yeah. So that was nice. Cool. Kadish. Uh loved this episode, but I've I, I like kind of like the backroom politicking stuff yes. as well. So like I've never been bored with the show. Like I, I love like all the political maneuvering and stuff like that. But this is the first episode that of this series that I, I feel had like an actual impact in the mm -hmm. fan base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I've been seeing a lot of chatter about this episode online. Oh, that's I, good. I, I feel like like you can't argue that this is a boring show anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like this episode was like the you know, the, the kind of uh, the gunshot that starts off the race mm. because mm. now we're going to start seeing some like real like crazy stuff start happening and uh, it's going to be a wild ride. Cool. This was like Ned getting beheaded. You think so? Yes. I like that. Yeah. it's like Because that was what? Season, that was the season finale of season one. Yes. Okay. Oh, the, no, no. It was the second to last. It was the penultimate episode. An ultimate? Oh, I don't have a drink. It was called Baylor. It was in, <laughs> it was the episode nine and then the fallout was episode 10. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you appreciate the uh, the knowledge that is in this table in this room. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun. It's it's fun watching them try not to spoil things. That I know it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Just, just it spoil awesome. it for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> like I do. Um, okay. Cool. But we will be here every single week. Uh, we drop these episodes. Uh, after everybody has a chance to watch the show, that's very well, why doesn't it come out on Sunday night? It's like, because not everybody watches things on Sunday night. That's a dick night. move also. <laughs> that too. I can't look at any social media yeah, all yeah. day on Sunday. We like to give it a good stretch of time so everybody has a chance to watch the show and then yes. you guys can come and watch the uh, the analysis of the episode uh, here. Um, I don't I don't know of anybody else who's doing these in-depth like podcast oh, reviews. For somebody. I'm there sure, people I'm who, sure there's people out there. There are people but, who are doing reactions. Yeah, reactions. Not, not and, the way we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, there is someone that I follow on TikTok. I I think her username is Game of Thrones Historian. <laughs> um, and she goes through every episode. Nice. And she does breakdowns of everything. And she's been doing Game of Thrones since season one. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, wow. She's very informed. She's read all of the books. Um, she, she's a great person That's to follow. That's awesome. Good deal. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching the show. Please comment below your, uh, your take on the episode. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you'd like to join the community, go to saltinerdiscord.com. We'd love to talk about Game of Thrones over there as well. And uh, we'll see you guys next week for the next episode. Stay salty. Hey, guys, if you like this video and you want to watch another one, click right here.